thing and a very warm welcome to you all to this service of prayer for the fifth Sunday in Lent. And I hope that in these challenging times, everyone is well and keeping in good spirits. Please do feel free to join in any of the acclamations as appropriate. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouth, mouth shall proclaim and your praise. Glory and to the to Father, the Father and, and to the Son, and, and to and the, the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, in the beginning is now, now, and shall be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than those who watch for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. A reading from Romans chapter 8, verses 6 to 11. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. A reading from St John's Gospel, chapter 11, beginning to read at the first verse. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Martha was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. Martha and Mary sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been put in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Jesus, she said to him, 
Yes, Lord, I believe you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When Jesus saw Mary weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus looked upwards and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him, let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins in the tender compassion of our God. The dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, Father. and to the Son, and, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. as it was in the beginning, in the beginning is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I'd like to focus on who Martha, Mary and uh, Lazarus were, and why they were so important to Jesus. Uh, perhaps a clue is in Luke chapter 10, when Jesus sends out 72 disciples with no money, or other means for support. Who are they relying on for food and shelter? Has it ever one occurred to you to wonder about what happened after the feeding of the 5,000? And these 5,000 people, did they just all go back home and it made no difference to their lives? Well, some of them perhaps. But following Jesus, doesn't necessarily mean a literal journey. There are plenty of examples of people who ask to stay with him, but he sends them back home. It's these occasional helpers 
who look after the traveling disciples. Their faith isn't second class if they haven't bought into the full lifestyle of a traveling disciple. So <clears throat> Martha, Mary and Lazarus are significant. They are believers. Martha says, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God. But their faith is shown in what they provide for Jesus. And it's clear that Jesus' love for them is just as intense as it is for any of the apostles. I don't think it's fanciful to see a contemporary parallel. <coughs> last, <coughs> last Thursday evening, Many people applauded the frontline carers for those who are ill. But their work in the current situation can only be sustained by the efforts of thousands of volunteers. The good news of the gospel needs the frontline active preachers and the supporters, the believing volunteers like Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy, have mercy upon, upon us. Lord, Lord have, have mercy upon us. upon us. So as Jesus taught us, so we pray. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, in heaven hallowed be your name. Name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> we pray for the worldwide church, for its leaders, its clergy, its people, and remembering all that they contribute to its life and work. We pray for all who are seeking to bring peace to a troubled world. Be with our leaders and all who are making decisions that affect the lives and futures of our families, communities, our countries, and the wider world. We particularly offer prayers for those in business, in education, in the caring professions, and we give thanks that our individual lives become complete as we live in community with others. Jesus, during your ministry on earth, you showed your power and caring by healing people of all ages and stations of life from physical, mental and spiritual ailments. Be present now to people who need your loving touch because of COVID-19. May they feel your power of healing through the care of doctors and nurses. Take away the fear, anxiety and feelings of isolation from people receiving treatment or under quarantine. Give them a sense of purpose in pursuing health and protecting others from exposure to the disease. Protect their families and friends and bring peace to all who love them. We pray for those who have suffered bereavement and we remember those who have died. We pray also for all who mourn that they may be comforted. Amen. Amen. The Collect for the fifth Sunday in Lent. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made, 
and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And we will conclude our worship with the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all, evermore. Amen. Amen.